I don't like stepping out there. I can see the top of my head on the screen when I step out there. And there's a <laughs> missing yeah, some hair. Yeah, there's something missing right there, Jeff. <laughs> And we need so time to talk. Um, our capacity filing. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, now we just have to lock up first year. Am I correct? You know, the, yeah. Um, the second, third, fourth years, so we we submit something, but we don't have to. We're, we're only responsible for. We have to have something. We have to have something. For four, all four yeah. years. Um, so we know Willard's not going to be around for. Uh, <laughs> we know he won't have anything for at least four years. Okay. So uh, yeah. So let's okay. um, sometime. Uh, be gone the last week of April, but I let's make it earlier. Ed's not going to talk. Yeah, before that, before you leave. Well, well, we, you you wanted us to. Yeah, we need do to do something by May, which right. is does the board need to approve that then? Oh, the filing is actually August. Is August, so we would, but, but, um, but you want by uh, May we're going to have the mic. Okay. So you're gone the last week of April. Yeah, this uh, Sunday through Thursday. But yeah, let's call it the last week of April. Okay, so I'll do something before that. Okay. I'll call. Just All do right. Ed and I. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. I think we're all set. We just have Kevin. Kevin was going to call him. Kevin, you there? That should be his I number. I am here. How are you guys? Good. Pam, are you going to just log in and share your screen? I am. Okay. Mics are hot, so be careful what you say. <laughs> Yesterday during the uh, building board meeting, I realized the uh, Closed captioning at the bottom now, and so I'm just fixated on that. You're reading it and seeing how it interprets what everyone's saying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it does a pretty good job. It's yeah. not it's not that far off. Every once in a while, you get some weird weird things. So, but yeah, you're pretty good there. Just a second. When is the what is the end date for uh, live streaming? Uh, March 31st, technically, and I don't think, but we, in the county, we passed emergency ordinance. I don't know if oh. you guys did anything. Yeah, we haven't done that, but uh, yeah. you, do you have to do it every seven days or? I, I thought no. they did it, I thought it was, it comes as a year. Our county did it last year. Oh, okay. And so it's good for as long as they have it. So, but it's really a county by county, or you can have the city pass one, but I think if your city passes it, you might be correct on that date. You got to do it every seven days. So if you can get your county board of commissioners to do it, it just makes it easy, like we have it. So, but since we're in Branch County, it sounds like they're all set. So, um, 
Tricia, are you there? I'm here. Okay, um, I'm gonna trust my phone time rather than the clock on the wall. So we're gonna call this meeting to order and uh, we do roll call, please. Jeff Budd. Here. Kevin Cornish. Present. Oh, uh, Clinton, Michigan, Lenawee County. Dave Mackey. Here. Chris Mathis. I am here in Branch County, Village of Union City. And Tom Tarkowitz. Here. Thank you. We have a forum. Yes. Yep. Okay, we have approval of the agenda. Any additions to the agenda? Anybody would like to add? Motion to approve. Jeff Bud. Second by Dave Mackey. Okay, we've got a motion to support. Uh, uh, Tricia, if you would, please. Kevin Cornish. Yes. Mackey. Yes. Mathis. Yes. Tarkowitz. Yes. And Bud. Yes. Okay, this section. Motion carried. Thank you, Trish. Um, this is for public comments on agenda items. Uh, uh, if you have any comments about agenda items, um, um, please, I'm not sure, um, Pat, if they raise their hands or uh, how we have this set up. So I'd like to just, and we will open yeah. your mouth. That is correct. Yeah, if they press, uh, if any of the callers that are on the uh, call now want to press star nine on their keypad, uh, that'll raise your hand. And then I will ask you to unmute. Um, I am called in on a uh, landline, uh, so I can confirm that what we posted uh, is working. And I do not see any hands at this time. Okay, well, we'll move on. Uh, need a motion and support to approve the minutes. Oh, wait a minute. I do get, I just, I just got a hand here. Okay. okay. That was me, Kevin, from the village of Clinton. We just confirmed that your star nine works. Oh, well, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, Kevin, we look forward to seeing you next month here live, so. <laughs> I look forward to it, too. Thank you. That's soon. Can't delay that. Can't delay it. <laughs> You can talk to his doctor. Okay. Um, I think we're approval of minutes of the March 4th regular board meeting. I'll take a motion to support. Clinton will make that motion. Hillsdale will second. Any changes on the minutes that were supplied to you? Hearing none, uh, Tricia, if you would again, please. Jeff Bunn? Yes. Cornish? Yes. Mackey? Yes. Mathis? Yes. And Tarkowitz? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on to finance um, uh, report. Uh, turn it over to Tom. Uh, good morning. Morning. I have a few comments uh, on the report for this meeting. Uh, one is on the MISO collateral. Uh, during that cold streak in February, the agency did have to post 1.45 million to MISO. So we currently have 3.1 posted with them. Uh, we are reviewing agency exposure uh, with MISO and plan to request a uh, collateral return hopefully uh, next week. Uh, one thing I would like to point out is that the agency did have a third party contract for January and February. It was a 15 megawatt, seven by 24 uh, fixed price uh, contract uh, it delivered to Indiana Hub. The fixed price was $27.15 a megawatt hour. So based on what power was settling at for the, at the Indiana Hub, for January, that contract was out of the money by about $15,000. But in February, that contract was in the money 
uh, just over $350,000. So that was a nice hedge against higher prices or higher costs that everyone saw in February. Uh, um, yes. Uh, Kevin, when you look at the higher posting, that's because generally each member probably sold more from the cold weather, but is a bigger chunk of that from increased load at Marshall? No, it's all, it's all based on how much the agency owes to MISO at a given period of time. So during that cold snap, when power prices um, oh. significantly increased, the bills that we had to pay to MISO increased as well. So the, the exposure, if, if a member were, anyone in MISO were to default, I'm sure other, uh, other members of MISO probably had uh, significant collateral calls as well. I didn't think of the cost going up there for everything. I just figured everybody used more. So that makes sense. Thank you. And I would also like to thank Pam and probably Scott, maybe you, Tom, uh, for that uh, two month deal that saved us a lot of money. So thank you. That's all I had. Uh, I do have a, a few comments on investments and banking. Uh, we met with representatives at Michigan Class and Fifth Third Securities. Uh, for Michigan Class, we set up five different, I guess what I call sub accounts, one for each member. Um, so the agency still has their main operating account or, or general fund, whatever it's referred to uh, with Michigan Class. And then each member has their own account. What we plan on doing this month is transferring your rate stabilization fund balances into each of your sub account. Uh, so therefore starting with your April statement, uh, you'll, you'll be able to see exactly what your balances are. And if you have activity during the month, whether you deposit or withdraw from your rate stabilization fund uh, based on your power bill, you'll see that activity um, pretty clearly. And then for Fifth Third Securities, uh, the agency has $6.3 million with Fifth Third, 4.6 of it is with a money market type instrument and 1.7 is in investments that have maturities later this year in 2021. Um, so the Fifth Third representative asked about investing some of the money uh, that's in the money market of funds into something longer term uh, to try in hopes of getting a better interest rate um, my opinion is that given the new cash reserve policy that we passed a few months ago, lowering the minimum reserve balance, uh, currently what interest rates aren't very high, our, our, our interest rate environment is not great. Um, I looked at pre-pandemic uh, performance between Michigan class and Fifth Third Securities um, and, and also with the possibility of a member leaving the agency, I think what we should look at is not locking in any of the money market funds into longer term investments. Um, I think we should consider transferring the money that's in fifth third into Michigan class, into the general fund. Um, that's the agency's overall account and consider winding down the relationship with fifth, fifth third securities um, as the current investments mature later this year. Uh, Fifth Third did mention that the reports they do for MSCPA are custom and do take time to generate. So this is the, the one is a board report that you get summarizing all the different accounts and investments and positions. And then we get a second report that has a little bit more detail um, that, doesn't, that doesn't go to the board every month. Um, and uh, so I got the impression that if the balance with Fifth Third Securities were, were lower than what it is now, um, it might not be worth it uh, for, from them. So I guess I don't know if I see a benefit of, of being with Fifth Third Securities right now. Maybe it's something as interest rates increase and we have more clarity as far as membership on, within, within MSCPA and uh, might be something worth revisiting down the road. But um, unless there's any objections or comments that anyone would like to make, I, I would like to move forward with, with that plan of action. 
just for full disclosure, I am on the on the Michigan class board, so I just want everybody to be aware of that. I mentioned that before, but I am on that board. And this um, has nothing to do with this. <laughs> um, do you need a motion from the board? And if so, what would you be looking for it to say? I I don't know if we need a motion. I mean, it's uh, it's I guess it would be part of cash management activities. I don't know if it's something in the past, have you had to make a motion in order to uh, do something? It, I don't think there would be required motion because you're just handling cash, but is that would also eliminate the, uh, the monthly fee that we're paying with the third bank as well, because on the investments. And how fast would you think you could unwind that? I mean, I, I, I think it's uh, the money market aspect, the $4.6 million is something we can probably have transferred relatively quickly. The investments, I think the last one matures um, in, in November of this year. So um, it'll probably be as the year progresses. Okay, as maturity. Okay, that's all I need to know. Thank you. Yeah. If we could just have the minutes reflect of what we're doing, that's good with me. That way there's a, you know, there's reference that the board's aware of it. Okay. And then the final thing I want to point out is I did uh, regarding the RFP for audit services. The RFP did go out yesterday to potential vendors. Uh, the distribution list that the RFP was sent to was based on contacts that I received um, from board members. Uh, so the RFP deadline is April 30th. So I plan to have all information to you after that deadline before the May board meeting so that we have, uh, we're able to make a decision on how to move forward with uh, the audit service. So I did get a couple responses after sending the RFP out yesterday um, from potential vendors saying uh, uh, thank you and then uh, they'll, they'll be sending a uh, proposal to us uh, before the deadline. And I think that's, uh, that's all I have unless anyone has any questions on that or any of the other reports or statements. Any questions for Tom? Okay, thank you, Tom. Thank you. Um, next on our agenda is approval of financial statements. So I'd like to get a motion in support for the February 21 financial statements and investment reports. Clinton will make that motion. Go order will second. Okay, any questions on your review of the financials? and not hearing any. Um, uh, Trisha, if you would uh, call the roll, please. Dave Mackey? Yes. Mathis? Yes. Tarkowitz? Yes. Bud? Yes. And Cornish? Yes. Motion carried. Next is approval of the February invoices. I'll take a motion and and support. Clinton will make that motion. Hillsdale will second. Any questions from the board uh, on the invoices? See and hearing none. Uh, Trisha, again, would you please? Chris Mathis? Yes. Tarkowitz? Yes. Bud? Yes. Cornish? Yes. And Mackey? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Moving on to our general manager's report, Pam. Uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Scott to give you an update on okay. generation projects. Morning, Scott. Morning, everyone. Uh, generation update uh, for February, Coldwater, Fillmore Road. Uh, project had a good month production wise. Sorry, 
and hit a slide there. Uh, about 266, uh, almost 267 megawatt hours for the month of February. Compared that to a year ago, it was only about uh, less than five megawatt hours. So uh, significant operation uh, this February really due to the weather conditions from the uh, AFEC project performance for the February was in line with our original budget project projections. There you see uh, about a 60% uh, capacity factor and utilization of about 83%. Scott? Mm -hmm. Yes. Why was it only 60 in February? You'd think it'd be needed all the time. That just seemed low to me. It's, uh, it's what actual operations turned out to be. And like you mentioned, it was in line with the original projections. So huh. Okay. I just figured with the cold weather, it'd run more, but loads uh, based on market conditions. It's uh, where we ended up. And that really wasn't impacted by the problems going on in MISO either. No, that is correct. It was not. No, and, and actually, Kevin, during the during that period, um, PGM prices did not see the um, the increases that MISO did or obviously or cut or um, so gas prices were up, but the power prices were not up as much relatively. So um, it didn't clear as much as you would think. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. From uh, hydro position, uh, hydro operations uh, for February was above projections. There you can see the numbers, all, all facilities, with the exception of Meldal, was slightly below their production uh, during February. That's primarily because they had an outage on, on one of their three units. So uh, February overall, uh, very good month again for hydro based on, based on positive river conditions. Uh, finished out uh, the last couple months of uh, 2020 and the first couple months of 2021 really above uh, projections for the hydros. Prairie State, Prairie State was for February was just uh, slightly below the original forecast, uh, primarily due to a couple uh, forced outages on unit one during the month. They did end up with a capacity factor of uh, just about 89% and an availability of uh, 88%. Scott, you might want to give an update on the outage there. Free state, correct. Yeah, so unit, unit one uh, entered a planned maintenance outage. It, I believe February 27th, it entered, entered that outage, a 35-day outage. Uh, primarily for uh, general boiler maintenance uh, work has progressed. It was originally scheduled to return to service April 3rd, actually came back online. I think it was Saturday. They are currently derated to about half output while they are wrapping up some work on one of the unit one boiler feed pumps. So that is uh, supposed to wrap up this week, which then would uh, put them back to full availability, uh, really within line with the, what the original forecast was. From a solar standpoint, solar, uh, cold water solar for February, you see there just about 78 megawatt hours uh, compared to uh, a projected of 107. So unfortunately, the February weather conditions so weren't supportive of uh, full projections for the solar project. Any questions on generation? As I say, cold water, we'll talk uh, later in the agenda. And uh, yes, MISO standpoint, uh, Pam or Chris? Yeah, I'll turn it over to Chris Norton, give you an update on highlights at MISO. Um, so for MISO, we got there the first things, the uh, times for the generator interconnection queue. Actually, MISO just put out the next monthly update yesterday, um, and all those tie, all those dates are still the same. So it's still DPP two is, or I'm sorry, definitive planning phase two is May seven, uh, three is September twenty, and execution of the generator interconnection is February seventeen. Um, the notice yesterday was a little odd. They marked everything in red, which is has a note indicating that that means it changed from the last one, but the dates, when you go back and compare the dates that are listed here are still the same dates that they had. So there's no, they had been slipping like a week every month they put it out, uh, but no slippage this time. And next we have some information on the cold weather events that MISO experienced in, um, 
in February, late February, 15, 16, and 17. Um, probably the, the big note is you can see that there was a significant amount of generator outage. Um, they, you know, they started out going into it with about a 7% outage, planned outage rate, and then the forest outages really took off um, you know, there in late February or middle of February, I guess I'd say when the, uh, the cold weather came through. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, we'll get, I think we'll get more details. The odd thing is uh, there is a reliability subcommittee meeting today and the presentation that they posted um, is exactly the same one that all this information or that the information that was here was pulled from. They got the same same slides with the same pictures and graphs and everything. Um, so that is a little bit odd. Um, now, before this, it was just as this report was turned in, uh, MISO was holding its quarterly board open board meetings. And the one thing, and it's not in this report because it, like I said, it happened just after the board report was turned in. MISO management really took a hard line on you know, that this, they really have to do something about these cold weather events because it seems that, um, you know, if you remember a couple, a year ago or two years ago, whatever it was, we had the cold weather up in the north and generation performed pretty poorly. And it seems like every time these things come up, uh, there's poor performance out of generation. So they're using it as an excuse to push forward with their available capacity methodology for determining the capacity rating of generators. Um, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next thing. And then the other thing that they're really pushing on is they've had this thing going on called the long range, long range transmission plan, um, which is supposed to be the next multi-value project type category. Um, since they haven't had any multi-value projects or anything that's managed to get into that bucket in a while, they're trying to find a new way to push some really large transmission projects through to, um, you know, more, make the footprint more interconnected. Um, of course, that'll come at a, at a pretty steep cost. Um, <clears throat> but the MISO management was very, uh, I'm trying to think how to say it, they're very forceful on it. At one point, um, Claire Moeller, who's, uh, I guess he's now the president, trying to remember, John Bear's president and Claire is CEO, or maybe I've got those two backwards, but um, he made a statement comparing their need to do something to deal with these cold weather events. Um, he, he created, he used the analogy of the Flint, uh, Michigan water issue and said, if we don't spend the money on it now, we're going to have huge public health crisis later. Uh, you know, that's, that's what they're telling their board. Um, obviously, entities are pushing back on that, but that's the message that, that MISO has decided that they want to deliver now. Um, moving into capacity, um, we've still seen similar presentations in the past on the moving to a seasonal resource adequacy uh, scheme. They, they still say two to four seasons, but when they talk about it, it's, you know, it's more focused on four seasons and really they've started to dig into details. And, and one of the details they hit this time was they talked about, okay, well, if we go four season, where do we stick May and where do we stick September? Uh, so they've actually started to get into the details, even though they have started getting into the details, they say they want to file by June. So you would think they would be further into the details. Uh, but over this last month, um, you know, there were a lot more uh, details about how you calculate the loss of load expectation, what happens when you have a season where, you know, it doesn't look like there is re any real loss of load expectation. Do you move, move risk around throughout the seasons of the year and then lead times for resources, stuff like that. So start, they're starting, they're finally starting to get into the weeds on this thing. Uh, Still kind of hard to see how anything rational gets filed in June, but you know, rational has never been a requirement. Um, there was a DTE put up a motion at the uh, resource adequacy subcommittee meeting 
that was at the beginning of March. And what they did, the motion was to deliver a message from the stakeholders in opposition to MISO's proposed available capacity, which is the calculation method to decide, determine how much capacity a generator is worth. And the stakeholders voted in favor of the motion, meaning opposed to MISO's available capacity proposal by a count of 54 in favor, two opposed, and three abstentions. Um, so it was, it was a pretty clear message, but keep in mind that that, hap that vote took place, the motion was put up in the, the first week of March, and then the votes were done by email, they were counted by mid-March, and then the MISO board meeting was last week. So MISO's management was well aware of what the stakeholders said on this, and still they decided to deliver that message to their board that they feel they have to uh, do something really drastic and, and really uh, somehow come to grips with uh, the high generation outage rates that they, that they see or claim they see during uh, these weather events. Moving on to the next thing, but also related back to the uh, weather events, on March 10th, MISO issued a notice that uh, Brazos Electric Cooperative down in uh, Texas had filed bankruptcy. They do serve some load in MISO and they've defaulted on a little under $400,000 in payments to MISO and MISO is expecting an additional default of just under 10 million. Um, the way the MISO process works when they have a default like that, they short pay all the suppliers, all the people that they would be paying money to. And you know, then they notice everybody. And then they work with the entity to see if they can recover those funds. And then at some point in the future, they'll decide, um, or well, if they are unable to recover those funds, at some point in the future, they can decide, okay, this is just unrecoverable. And then what they do is they declare the default. It gets uplifted to, you know, so it's spread out to everybody. So everybody takes a little bit of it and then they go back and they pay the suppliers that, you know, would have normally been paid the full, their full amounts in the beginning. Um, so we don't, you know, we don't know an exact timeline of when we'll find out how big this is. Um, we don't even know, hey, by some date certain it will be declared as recoverable or not. Um, we're just having to wait on MISO to see what happens with that. Um, another new issue out of MISO is uh, MISO has started to experience some underfunding on FTRs. A big driver of this is the MISO uh, SPP scene. So their, their Western and Southwestern scenes. Uh, they've had some new flows, uh, so constraints that not no longer match how they're modeled in the ARR allocation in the FTR auctions. Um, and it's pretty concentrated, about 60% of the underfunding is coming from the top 10 of these constraints. But MISO is letting everybody know that, you know, that means they have to, they need to change how their modeling flows when they run their error allocation and FTR auction. Um, so I'm not sure how that's come out yet, but it's, it could lead to uh, rights, financial, or, well, au auction revenue rights and or even financial transmission rights that people may have obtained before that either they will not be able to obtain or that will come at a higher cost than what they were. Hopefully, hopefully all the constraints that are being changed are close enough to the MISO SPP scene that they won't impact us, but on any kind of AC system model, things that are far away from your location can have an impact. Thanks, Chris. Any questions for Chris? Okay, a couple other administrative items, Tom. Um, so I, I guess I noticed on the um, website we have the, the phone number for the MSCP old office, which I guess the phone system is connected now. Um, do should we change that to the AMP phone number? Or? We can. I can change whatever you want. Type Harold change the website. Yeah. Uh, I should go your number, right? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I can let Harold know. Um, the other thing is we're in the process of um, the insurance renewal. Um, we had a call with um, with them last week, I believe. 
couple questions. I had the trailers. Um, do we still own those and where, where are they located? Currently, are we, we have them. I think so. I'm looking at Chris, you might know more about those real trailers or the like, that we like own together. You guys had those. They're, they're up with yeah. us yeah. right now. They're at Marshall. Okay. And they are being used. Yeah. I mean, okay. we'll be using them later on this year to plan to. Okay. I don't get down to that garage and see if they're in there. So. <laughs> I wouldn't know right. what they were anyway, <laughs> no matter where they were. Yeah. That's all I had um, on the other items we discussed during the sure. Any questions? Uh, on the insurance, uh -huh. I know last year the, the cyber insurance was a big deal. I mean, we're so, I mean, I don't know when these take effect, but just I wouldn't want to sign up for more of that. We're the only thing we have out there is a website anymore, and we were able to disconnect the servers and everything. I know we can't right this minute but right. again once we get i mean i did talk to the quick the auditor he's real close to having that done we got more information this last week to get them up on quickbooks and then all that can just go away so yeah and we just, did update them on that so okay hopefully perfect be a thanks reduction any questions for Pam or scott or chris Well, let's move on to uh, action items. Uh, we have the Union City cost analysis. Uh, um, I'm not sure where we want to start with this. If Tom, is there anything or Pam? I guess. Yeah, I guess I can give you a couple updates on um, some items. Um, so it just so happened that consumers sent a request to um, amend the wholesale distribution service agreement with Union City. Um, to clean up the issue that they don't own transmission anymore. Um, so it was really a cleanup that they wanted. Um, and they sent that to Al Robbins. I had a call with Al. Um, I talked to Chris Mathis and we thought it was a good time to try to leverage this to see if we can just change the counterparty on that to have it be just between Union City and consumers. Consumers was open to that um, and has have revised that. Um, and I guess, Chris, at this point, I, I'm not sure if you want Al to continue to review that on your behalf. We can continue through the MSC, through the agency. I, I, yeah, I would definitely prefer to have Al review that if we can do that and just bill us uh, for that. Um, so hopefully that'll get that, um, that cleared up regardless. Um, and then the other item is the, um, the UP Hydros. Um, so those, those are actually owned now by Eagle Creek Renewable. Um, which I know one of the people there that's at Eagle Creek is, sits on the NHA board with me. Um, so I did have a conversation with Eagle Creek um, and, and I had Steve Mann review it as well. And he, and they believe that um, we can't just assign it to Union City. We have to have Eagle Creek um, agree with that. I talked to them, they are agreeable to that and their legal is drafting an assignment agreement. Um, so we need to do that, so. So then financially, so they would just, they get their own bill. There'd be a separate invoice. Yeah, okay. The CPA would get theirs, their 4%, I believe it's 4%, but they would get, would bill Union City directly. Okay. We need to work out um, how that would be. They need one market participant. Um, we need to work that out, but I think we can do it through the AMP side of it because Union City would still be a member of AMP. So, um, but I need to talk to Chris more about that. But Is that an agreement that we would also suggest having reviewed by Al? Or Robins too as well, or is that just a standard thing? Probably, Chris. Okay, thanks. Yep, if you're okay with that. Yep, yep, definitely. Okay. So they got to say a member of of AMP board. Um, at this point, is uh, depending what they do with their Fremont. Um, oh, gotcha. But yeah. if they're out of Fremont, I think that was one thing Chris wanted to be done with AMP as well. But I, I'm just curious. Yeah, it depends on Fremont, and then we need to address um, the AMP GS. Um, issue as well, but separate conversation, I guess. <laughs> no big deal. I was just curious. Yep. Um, so besides that, I guess Tom, I, I know Tom sent out some revised analysis. I don't know if you want him to pull that up. Okay. Tom, I'll stop sharing well, here. Well, before we, oh. yeah, uh, Chris, uh, uh, the common payment, uh, Pam, you know, about you still being a member of AMP is, um, if uh, 
we don't need to have an agreement with you and AMP if you're not going to be an AMP member. So I think that something probably be suggested you talk with Pam on making sure that we don't spend money to have AMP be represented and you're not going to be a member of AMP. I think I understood that, yes. <laughs> okay. That's sort our of fumble there a little bit, but uh, yeah, just. Uh, I think I got it. Uh, just get with Pam directly is what you're saying to make sure correct on that issue, the AMP issue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Yep. Hey, uh, Tom, just a question. Uh, is this what you sent us on March 22nd? Would that be the correct? So I believe on March 22nd, I sent out the the one that, so after, after the board meeting, I sent out, uh, I received two comments. One was to uh, exclude Clinton uh, and, and one was to exclude Clinton and Hillsdale from the analysis. And then the other comment I received was, uh, in addition to the 50 month payback, can we run the analysis with, analysis with the 96 month payback? So I sent two separate files out uh, on the latest email. One, this is the excluding Clinton with a 50 month payback and a 96 month payback. There's two separate sections here. And then I also sent a similar file out to keep the format the same, just to make it easy. Uh, excluding Clinton and Hillsdale with both the 50 and 96 month payback. Okay, all right. I did not, I, and I can, I, can, I can delete that from these uh, files if, if you would like, but I did not change the UP Hydro yet. Um, I think at the time, uh, Pam was still looking into uh, whether it was possible uh, Union City will take it with them or not. So um, this still has UP Hydro in that, but I can, I can okay. take that out for discussion if that helps. Okay, thank you, go ahead. I don't know which which file you would like me to have up. Um, I guess that's up to you. I think a good starting point is the one that you have up there. What do people think about this? If Clinton and Hillsdale, who have less need, well, I have no need for transmission. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? I'll start on cold water. We're, we're pretty neutral on the whole thing. So um, it, it doesn't move the needle for us one way or the other. So um, really looking at, you know, I don't want to exclude anybody. The only thing is I know is my board thinks that this should be a unanimous decision. So obviously COWAR could be the swing vote. COWAR is not going to be the swing vote. We're either going to all do this or we're all not going to do this. So um, that was the direction I was kind of given. And I'll echo that for Marshall. I mean, uh, we started the discussions with Union City, so uh, we want the, full, the group to be together on this so that we can move forward. So I guess the really the conversation is really going to be with Hillsdale and Clinton here and what is acceptable uh, to them. This is Kevin. My comments are lazy. When the FERC rules changed um, a few years ago, 10 years, whatever it was ago, we no longer needed to use the transmission. And so I, I have no need for it. So mine's are lazy. I, I like this proposal if it works. If not, I like the one before it. So I hate to say, Dave, but it's up to you now. Um, from Hills, Hillsdale's perspective, we like the, the proposal that's on the board. Um, we do not have any interest in uh, in the transmission. Um, so with this last um, analysis, um, we could support this if Col Coldwater and Marshall wanted to split the, that transmission and that all those costs. All right. Thank you, guys. Hey. Oh, go ahead. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I was going to ask Chris a question, but go ahead. I was going to ask Pam a question. Okay, well, I'm going to go ask Chris then. Go ahead. Uh, my prerogative, I guess. So. Um, Chris, you're still okay with the 96-month payback? 
Yeah, I, I'm definitely okay. I don't want this to burden anybody either. And uh, we, we've talked about it in house too as well. We'd like it to be a, a win-win for everybody if possible. And looking at that 96 month one, I think if you take the hydro out, I believe it becomes pretty neutral to uh, or, or close to it for, and then, then a win after that, if I'm correct. Yeah, Tom just took, I guess Tom's controlling the screen here. Uh, yeah, Tom just took the hydros out. So you can see it on the 96 month. Yep. Okay, um, Jeff. Pam, two questions. So had, you were going to ask ITC if they had a scheduled maintenance. That would be the one thing that, that would be in my mind that is, you know, could, hey, if all of a sudden they got a million, you know, or some uh, extreme number. You, it, I it did probably, reach out to them. I have the, the response. I, got, I asked for a 10 year. Um, they said they have a five year. I said, that's, well, I'll take whatever you have. Um, and I have not received that yet. So I will okay. reach back out to them. It probably doesn't make change the needle anyway. We're not yeah. talking 10 megawatts. So it's, so, and then the second follow-up question. So then one of the, the issues that was always there. So this new consumers ITC thing that eliminates any ties that the agency would have for that consumer's line to Union City. We'd be told, we wouldn't have to do anything for them. There's, there's, yeah, there's would, that, zero, right? I'll, I'll That's another big distribution agreement. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So there would be no ties anywhere. It wouldn't be like, we'd have to be in the middle of any deal I, I, that's the way we're structuring it. So yeah, totally that's, clears that's, that whole, clears that entire that's thing. The goal. Okay. Yes. Yep. Chris, were you going to say something, or, or, I'm assuming that's what you would prefer if uh, you, you, we were not your agent, if uh, like we had originally talked about. Yeah, I think that's uh, best for everybody if we can uh, arrange that. Uh, and it sounds like we're moving that direction, and everything's uh, falling in line there. Um, Pam, from your perspective, is there any, or from, from an AMP recommendation to, the, as MSCPA general manager, is there anything you would caveat that we haven't thought about or discussed? There's nothing that else that I'm aware of. Okay. So I, I, I think the AFEC, uh, we need to address that because it is a three-party agreement currently. MSCPA is in the middle of that, so we're going to have to get that addressed. Um, so is that as simple as... It, it, I, can, I, I haven't looked into that. I think um, at the most, I didn't, I didn't think it think board approval, maybe a proposal. But that could be assigned to, that could also be assigned to cold water. Or, it could or, be. Without yes. going to the rest of the AMP electorate voters? Uh, yes. Okay, because that's the agency is in the middle. So that's the one thing. So that they could just say, yes, they will allocate. So if anybody has wanted, we could, as a, the other four members could say, we either want a share, no shares, or sell it back to the AMP membership. Or, or have another AMP, AFEC participant. Yeah. Purchase yes, purchase. AFEC, I'm sorry, AFEC, yes. Sir. Either way, I would take AMP board approval and participants. Okay. Um, Chris, what is your plan for AFEC? Uh, because to move this forward, I think that's maybe the last piece of the discussion. With this cost analysis that Tom did, how was that figured in to that right there? Or what? Do we... This, this does, does not take any AFEC into account. Okay, okay. Uh, we, did, we did not want AFEC, uh, yeah, so we would like to unload that if possible. So that would actually clean everything up. So then there's no ties to anybody anywhere. And AFEC is a little more palatable than Ampydros. <laughs> now the MGS situation. What was that? Is that? That's the. Um, yeah, I, I, I know what it is, but. Um, yeah, but it's the plant help for future use. Um, they still. So Union City had a piece of that. They did have a piece of MGS. Oh, yes. I didn't. I know that. I didn't think yes. they were in that. Okay, gotcha. Um, and I think it can be addressed, but it, yeah, it would be. Just direct bill directly or with, yeah, Union City. All right. Um, I missed that last part. What is it that's directly billed? What part? This is just the plan health for future use portion of the AMPGS project that, that Union City had participated in. We just need to address that. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I, I did not realize they were part of AMPGS or had gotten. And Chris, 
just for your information with that, uh, both you and both us had small pieces in it, and there was a way that we were able to generally walk away from it for, for paying a few thousand dollars. And so I think you're not likely to get much from it if I remember you doing the same thing we did. Okay, very good. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate that. Um, I can't see the participants. Is Steve Mann on the call? He was. Yes, I'm here. Good morning, Steve. Does this not give you enough information to move forward um, to draw up whatever needs to be draw, drawn up uh, um, for either Union City Board approval, this board approval? Uh, is there any piece that you're missing, do you think? I think we're getting close. I think we need to digest this a little bit and probably have a, a side conversation with uh, Pam and maybe Tom Sillian, Sillison. Okay. All right. Um, I guess that's just, um, I don't think we need a vote, but just a consensus is that Miller Canfield and um, um, Jennings Strauss move forward with whatever uh, uh, items, documents that need to be put together to move, to move forward. Does everybody okay with that? Clinton is supportive of it. What we're looking at is generally, i.e. the thing that Pam mentioned with consumers, we might get it where actually Union City will be a standalone on their own, completely separate from us, where before there were some ties. Is, is that how this is leaning at the moment? I believe so, Kevin, that is correct. Thank you, sir. There'll be no ties whatsoever. Totally right. clean. And I think that was the intent when Chris and I started talking about this last year is a, a really a clean break. Um, and so uh, I, I can see Chris is head nodding up and down here. So I, I'm taking that as an affirmative. So uh, back to Steve is um, so you're going to move forward uh, working with uh, Pam and Tom and um, uh, uh, for all documentation that needs to be done. Yes, that's correct. Uh, except for that, that's being done by uh, Al. Probably the only thing that Poa would like to do, this has not been officially approved by my board. I probably do need official action. I don't know if that, that won't slow anything up, but again, yeah. you know, we just had talked in generalities. They have not seen numbers. So I will need to provide, provide some additional information to them. Because mm -hmm. all we talked about was in general yeah. terms. And the only agreements, uh, Steve, that we've talked about that will have to be beside the MSCPA board would be uh, some docu documents that the Union City Village Council will need to approve. Am I correct on that? Yes, that's correct. And I'll just remind you, we'll want to get uh, conflict waivers in place as well, because we do represent several of the entities. And in this case, uh, my understanding is that we would be drafting these on behalf of the agency and, and not any individual member. Right. Okay. And we can, we can write those waivers into the agreement, actually. I see a couple of things administratively. We want to make sure we memorialize these costs as well, like we did the last time with adoptions of minutes. So, Tricia, this, um, uh, I'm not sure what... Uh, so are you saying, Jeff, that what we're seeing on our screen right now would be part of the minutes? Yeah, yeah that really more how make sure that it, that's really the um, the percentage page is what's probably more on the administration tab, Tom, that those would be the new, because I'm thinking we, we're going to have to redo the bylaws because the bylaws state everybody's percentage mm -hmm. of vote. And, and that would, are we, I, I guess a couple things that I think we can work out. Do we all then get 25% vote or how does, you know, I don't think we, we, we don't weight our votes anyway. So it's still just 25%. So just a couple nicky knack things that I would think we want to make sure everybody's aware of that we're not getting more voting rights or anything of that nature. Then in fact, this is a pure financial transaction. Our votes are still our votes. Um, I'm not sure how many pages this would come up and I'm wondering is, 
could we submit this in the minutes of this meeting, uh, this entire document? Is there anything uh, proprietary or confidential that would not be, I don't think there is. I think it's, I mean, we have it on the screen here. Tom, your feeling on, uh, can we just- I, I don't think so. I don't think there's anything in here that hasn't been discussed okay. or put out before. Would you be willing after you've taken the, uh, the hydro out, just like you did, um, maybe send to all the board and to Tricia so that she'll incorporate this as part of the minutes? Sure. I can, I can send it as an Excel and as a uh, PDF if that would help. Okay. Does the board feel at this time uh, that we've asked legal counsel to move forward that we should have a motion and that we've, so that we don't keep changing our minds uh, over the next months. We, we, I mean, I'm just wondering what, how, if everybody feels comfortable just where we're at today or, um, or we need a motion and I'm not the best one to come up with what that motion would say. It Mr. Was, Chairman, would you be, and I'm asking other board members too, would you be looking for a motion, something to the effect that the agency would like to move forward with I don't use the word selling or transferring, selling maybe, Union City's transmission and energy and capacity. I don't know, I don't know that word, um, ownership uh, to Coldwater and Marshall, subject to our legal counsel finalizing the appropriate documents to be executed at a later date. Something of that nature, maybe? Is that what you're thinking? I, I'm thinking we just should have something. Maybe just. I agree. I was just trying to come up with something. Okay. Well, Pam has an idea here. Okay. Maybe, maybe just a motion authorizing us to proceed with developing legal documents to allow for the withdrawal of Union City for the discussion. That sounds. I like I like Pam's but... yes, and and maybe for the reallocation of uh, assets. Much better word. Okay. I don't think you can do more than that if you still need to get. Right. Too wordy. Clinton makes that motion that Pam's gonna and Steve will make sound better. Can you please repeat that? <laughs> All right, Pam. Pam Pam's gonna. Go ahead. Okay. Um, it's a motion to um, authorize um, the general manager to begin uh, retain legal counsel to develop legal documents to allow for the um, withdrawal of Union City from the agency and reallocation of it, its entitlements. That was my motion from Clinton. I have one question, I guess. Um, well, let's, oh, go ahead. let's have a support before we take any. Union City will support. Okay, so we have a motion to support. So, um, Pam? How are we allocating the cost of those public expenses? Which expenses? The legal expenses. I understand the, 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 the UP Hydro and the distribution agreement would be completely Union City's cost. Um, what about the, what Steve, Steve Mann will be working Probably on? Probably should be. 50% Union City, 50% Coldwater and Marshall, but ours would be split based on the transmission reach getting or however that. I'm fine with that. Grace, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I said I'm fine with that if we do 50% us and 50% between you two guys. Or if we do 50% us, 50% Marshall, and 50% Coldwater, that'd be great. <laughs> Yeah, that good. They're unboxing the money. I thought 100% Clinton personally, but uh, <laughs> it, should, it should not. It shouldn't detriment yeah. it. Right. I, I would, I can accept that. So that'll be our plan, Pam. Okay. Thank you. And the same with the MCR costs. We'd have to go back. We'll have to. Yeah. Figure that out. Okay. Um, Tricia, are you perfectly clear? Absolutely, as mud. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I'm good. You're good. Okay, I'm just checking. Uh, sometimes the connection from home for you breaks up a little bit, so I want to make sure. So, okay. <laughs> uh, any further discussion on the motion uh, that Clinton made Hillsdale supported? Okay, Tricia, will you please call the vote? Jeff Bunn? Yes. Kevin Cornish? Yes. Dave Mackey? Yes. Chris Mathis? Yes. And Tom Tarkowitz? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, uh, Jeff? Uh, just a general question, I mean, just a general statement. If it probably won't happen, 99% sure it won't, but if it does go to my board and they say no, we want to wait to start spending legal expenses, I don't see, see it happening. But I just got thinking, I just want to know the risk. I don't want them to, you know, because like, we just had a meeting last night, so we don't have a meeting till May. I go to mile. Yeah. I would, I would prefer to move ahead with legal and take that risk, but I know you guys have some risk in that too as well. So, but from my aspect, I'd rather move forward so that we could uh, keep on a timeline. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I just want to, I, I can't sure, I do that. Yeah. yeah. But, but I'm 99% sure it's going to happen too, and I'm good with the risk as well. But. It's the same here. We haven't officially formally voted on our board. I'm sure it will, and I don't have any problems with that, and I, I'm confident of that, but uh, I think there's some unknowns that are beyond us and we understand that, I think. Okay. All right, thank you, board members. Um, I don't even know where I'm at next. Uh, anything else we need to do, Pam or Tom or Steve, uh, concerning Union City before we move on to the tougher topic of document scanning? <laughs> Everybody's smiling. So we're going to move on. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to Pam or to uh, Jeff or. I guess my understanding is um, we're, we're, part one is completed. Part, um, part, part one is completed. Uh, if you go in the back room, those big racks are still full of boxes, but the stuff that was sitting around is pretty much all gone. There's a lot, everything we have now is pretty much has dates to destroy dates. So there's still, we, we'd still, we still got to do part two. Harold's been going through in it and and still figuring out what we can and can't get rid of. We may decide to just go back through and, and scan some more, but it would have to come back to the board for approval before moving forward. But it's not, it's not like gone. Um, Jim sees it. I mean, there's those two, two big racks are still there. Instead of being totally full, they're like, I want to say a three quarters full, but a lot of the stuff is like destroyed in two years and that'll take a, take like a shelf. And then the next year it's another year and then it's another shelf. So, at some point, we might be able to clean that all up. So. so we did receive a thumb drive with everything that's been scanned so far. And we have that um, downloaded on AMP's server. Um, I guess they, they would like us to sign a document um, authorizing them to shred what has been. So Harold is, is OK with it. Um, I guess if the board's OK, I'm willing to sign the document. But it's, it's based on Harold's review. I haven't personally gone through every document. <laughs> our, our IT director as well as Harold have both looked at the quality. Quality is good, so you can see everything. Everything it looks like it was very organized, very detailed. Um, so I, I mean, I, I, Jim, I think Jim's even seen it. So we have multiple thumb drives. So we just kept one here just in case. And then you backed it up on your server. We actually are backing it up on the Traverse server that holds our accounting software that we're going to unplug. So if we ever had to. Because we're going to unplug that and set it on a shelf somewhere. So if we ever had to, we could plug it in and hope it fires back up if somebody needed something. But we think we've got adequate safeguards to get. I, we're good with it, if, but it's up to the board. If there's something you guys think you guys need. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Right. Okay. Uh, renewables uh, analysis that you sent out the other day to us, Pam. I did. Um... And just uh, quickly, this is, we do this annually. Um, uh, just goes through the assumption, hopefully you've had a chance to look at this. Um, rent prices are up a bit. Um, Michigan is still relatively low compared to the rest of the market, um, but it's about what national recs are, GE or uh, green E recs. 
Um, so the 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 bid ask you can see there is dollar fifty to two fifty. So the midpoint's about two dollars a megawatt hour or a rack for twenty twenty. Um, went through it all. The only I'll get down to the bottom line is um, Marshall or um, Coldwater. Apologize. Um, is the only one that has uh, is short for 2020. Um, we need to file this in June, um, so we'll need to you know purchase recs on their behalf. Typically, in the past, my understanding is we uh, the one that's short, which has been Coldwater, purchases from the rest of the remaining members. Last year, I think it was a dollar a rec, um, which the prices were lower. So this year, we're proposing two dollars a rec and what, approval for that. What jumped up the pricing? Demand. I mean, it's. They're all, they're all, all the rec prices are, have been going up. Yeah, it's just a big, big number. Should we be buying these out further? Um, we can, obviously, rec prices are higher the further out we go. Um, yeah, I just didn't know if, but again, you know, jump doubled in one year, is next year going to be tripled? Yeah. So are we better off to lock in now? I mean, more of a long-term strategy versus you can year see to there. Yeah, we could buy 2021 for two probably today yeah um, yeah this was a big number i just wouldn't want to go up another dollar yeah i mean yeah we've been looking capacity and you know solar is the prices that we're seeing on solar including the rex it is yeah they've been bundled prices so capacity solar and or rex and energy and that's and the analysis teased down, they've taken that all into account. That's the yeah. same question I asked her. So any so any, if we get into a solar, they're a, accounting for those in that analysis. So it's not yes. like they, they... They netted out the revenue you get from, because we're looking at from a capacity standpoint, they netted out the revenue you got from the energy and the RECs. Okay. Yeah. Just like, okay. Yep. And that's where that shows up in that money coming back in yes. to, the pro, to the project. Right. That is RECs and energy. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I just, you know, so the question is, at what point does the, the price get solidified? Is it, do we play the market? Because I mean, obviously, I'm the one, I'm the only one buying. Well, <laughs> so, I'm, so it makes I it will be here. Huh? You will be, but I, I just want, even for our group, because you got to be fair to everybody. So, whatever, I mean, what, what day do you wait to buy these or to settle up on? Because if the market, you know, if it's like any market, if it goes down two months from now, do we use that price or we use the price today? Yeah, I guess. I mean, you, you know, we don't then know. Then you take the risk. Do you overbuy because these are, you know, projections of what your load is going to be? Yeah. I mean, we had our, our load went down significantly. So. Yeah. So. Yeah. You, yeah. I just could be less for you than what's projected yeah, here. <laughs> You know what the price is, what the price is, right? You know, I'm not exactly, you know, whether I buy it from Marshall and Hillsdale, and, you know, if I don't buy it from that, I got to buy it from that same price, right? Yeah. And that's, the, I mean, that's why I'm just kind of curious what, what should that date be? If not, we want to go back to July 1 of 2020 and get it for a dollar. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I don't, so whatever is fair. Your drop and load. Just temporary. Just, they say it is. Say it's just a greenhouse. They didn't plant or they didn't light partial part of the greenhouse, and it's dropped at seventeen percent right at the top. So it's caused some issues. Good and bad. So what action? Um, I, I guess if the other members want to sell their twenty twenty racks to cold water, we need a, a price that. That they would be willing to do that at. and i guess cold water's approval yeah. to buy at that price and again we're not in the market so we got almost i mean i gotta look at you say is that a fair price or is it not a fair price yeah right, so that's two dollars is a fair price okay cool dollar 75. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. sold <laughs> We have a strategy going on. I guess if you start seeing them go up, because yeah. obviously, you know, in hindsight, I would have bought three years worth at a dollar, but not knowing the prices go that they're moving. So I don't know how you. 
Right. I don't know how liquid is that a daily traded market or is it a monthly daily still? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't know if at what point somebody saw it going up, should somebody have said, hey, we should hedge this. So again, just asking the, the question. So how you know what to do going forward? So if all of a sudden it goes starts to go up to four dollars, that I mean now we're really big numbers for cold water. Right. Yeah, we can we can put together a strategy on this and figure it out. Yeah, because I mean we've always been told, hey, wrecks are cheap, so don't worry about it. Yeah. You know, and you know, Bob, well, I got, you know, Bob would come up and say, hey, they're not worth anything, and you know, now all of a sudden they're becoming pretty valuable, at least to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, to everybody a little bit, so. I guess a question for the future. <clears throat> Does your legislative, um, do we think Washington's gonna push something out here for a higher renewable standard nationally? Uh, is there anywhere on the agenda that's not been really made too public? Yeah, I'm just wondering if with, you know, control of, you know, the, you know, Legislate uh, the House and the Senate and the White House is is there going to be a push where all of a sudden, like it was when we jumped into AMP hydros, you know, they, they were talking 25 percent. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to come, you know, through as a oh, renewable portfolio standard or a carbon legislation. I mean, something I think that's the watch. Well, the Biden thing came out. He said by 2030, he's going to have this 500,000 electric vehicle charging stations. I mean, he says by 2035, you know, no transmission. You know, if you read, or not no transmission. Yeah, no, I was gonna say. no, everything would be electrified by 2035. That's a <laughs> yeah, yeah. 30,000 megawatts transmission. Well, about the car manufacturers, also GM is just pushing, you know, out there that by, I can't remember the numbers. They'll have 30 new vehicles that are all electric. And I'm waiting for that Explorer to come out mm -hmm. all electric. And then, you know, yeah. Be my first electric, I think. Okay. So, so, so let me, so we, so everybody else is short. So, so we will pay them on that. And that just sells up just at the end of the year. We'll do it one time. Yeah. yeah. Everybody else is long. You're, yeah, right. You're, you're, right. Yes. Or, yeah, vice versa. Sorry. But then, I'm just trying to think of will that hit and this may be a question for Tom Sillison, will that hit all in the month? I, I, excuse me, let me are we buying for one year or are we doing for three years? No, we're just buying for 2020. Just for 2020. Yeah, so it's 36,000 for you. Okay. Tom, how do you usually is that in one month? Yeah, that'll get settled up for one year, all in one month. Okay. But looking forward though, we should I should lock all these guys in right now today. <laughs> 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 yeah, because that never really grow. And that's why I was just worried about. But it could go down too, though. If they could go on, down. If they build on the solar emissions. I might want to sell, sell high right now. Sell high, Dave. I'm thinking about two bucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank so, you. Yes. So what's the feeling of the other board members? Uh, Kevin, Dave, Chris? I'm, I'm good with that plan. Yeah, I am as well. It yeah, works for me. Then. You can do a pro rata share of the length. Yeah, you talked one hundred and seventy-five dollars per. I think I heard. No, two. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I had to try. You're gonna get my transmission that you don't need anyway. I, I should I should stick you with for the transmission. But you just she wasn't doing anything from before. <laughs> right. Okay, um, you want a motion, Pam, or? Yeah, please. Okay, um, we need to have a motion, so. Uh... For support. <laughs> Move, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> I guess, I'm, I'm turning to Pam to say. Um, a what motion is... to approve the, the sale of 2020 Rex from the other members to cold water at $2 per rack. I'm 75. <laughs> <laughs> Clinton will make that motion. Union City will support. 
Okay. Krisha, did you get that? Um, Pam, could you repeat it one more time? Approve the sale of Rex. Um, from the uh, two cold water at $2 per rec from the other um, members. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, we have a motion support. Any other further discussion on it? Okay, Tricia, please. Jeff Budd? Yes. Cornish? Yes. Mackey? Yes. Mathis? Yes. And Sarkowitz? Yes. Motion carried. Okay. okay. Moving on to Cold Water Peaking Project. Um, yeah. yeah, that's, um, we have oh, confidential proposals. So I don't know if you want to do the rest of the agenda. Sure, let's do that. Okay. Um, we'll come back to that. I Sorry, I didn't read that. Um, I, I don't know if we have any other business. Um, well, we'll take public comment on non-agenda items. So Pat, if you can watch, please. Yeah, I'm looking, I see there's only one phone call around the line and I think that's Kevin's group. So uh, I don't think there's any public comment this time. Oh, we haven't heard from Don in a long time. So, but uh, okay, uh, we'll move on to um, Commissioner's comments and members municipal update. Uh, we'll start with cold water. Uh, cold water's fiber project is moving right along. Uh, we're very happy. We're under budget and uh, we think it's going to be a really good thing. Uh, electrically, our electric load is down, uh, as we mentioned, significantly. Um, so, but we think that that will return more to normal uh, down the road. Uh, and that's, at this point, it's kind of quiet. So nothing really happening. Right now, we'll okay. all before the storm. Okay. Hillsdale, Chris Revave. Um, just have a number of road projects underway, wrapping one up from last year. Um, my council did approve some special assessment districts for roads, which is the first time I've ever done that. Um, we're also going to be looking at uh, bond issues for road repairs to actually do more than annually. Um, so that'll be coming up. We did, um, I think in February it was, get our final approval needed for uh, the funding package for our Kiefer Hotel, which is a renovation of a historic building downtown. Um, the project's about $12 million. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, and I'm uh, just working on budget. Anything else? Chris? Yes, yeah. um, water tower renovation is supposed to start the end of April. Uh, so that'll be down for 60 days. I think it's a total outage on that. Um, and then uh, substation equipment bids. Plan to take that to the board um, next week or two weeks in their meeting. But we received uh, some pretty favorable bids back on that as well. So looking forward to that project. Uh, Chris, Union City. Uh, we have our single hauler trash service starts tomorrow. Uh, that'll be starting then. That, that's gone over very well. That's uh, been very successful. We appreciate Marshall's helped us a little bit too, since we're using the same uh, company. Uh, our, our police department just got uh, body cameras and new car cameras. That's a first for us. We haven't had that before. And we're doing our substation project. It looks like later this month, we're going to be uh, placing the whole town on temporary generation for a few weeks while we switch over our substation to a 10 megawatt substation. So uh, that's been going pretty well, but there's a lot of moving parts. So it's a little scary, but, uh, but it seems to be going pretty well so far. And that's all I got. Are you bringing in generators or what's the temporary gen? Yeah, we're going to bring in, uh, we're, we're replacing our, our only uh, substation, our one and only five megawatt substation to a 10 megawatt. So we got to take that offline. So we're going to do temporary generation for about two weeks. Two, two megawatt generators, we have to do it this month because that's our lowest load in April and May. 
Uh, and then we have to hope we don't have any 100 degree days in April or we'll be in trouble. So, so. Are, they, are they just big cats you're bringing in, cat diesels? Yeah, it's a agro company. I, I can't remember the name, agro KO or something like that. It's a company that brings them in on semi trailers. They're two, two megawatt and they're going to run off diesel uh, yeah. for, for a couple of weeks. Interesting. Yeah, I don't want to be living next door to them for a while. <laughs> they well, they told me there wouldn't be noise. Is that a, is that a lie? Is it, are they going to be noisy? <laughs> Fairly quiet. Can't hear them. <laughs> yeah, all right, great. They said a low hum. It's all I'll hear. So. <laughs> be hearing them in cold water. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, it could be a fun time. Yeah. Good. Uh, Kevin. Uh, several things, just you know, normal stuff, but we've got a water main project we're doing to loop a part of town together, uh, doing a street construction project, probably another six weeks before that starts. Substation, we're continuing to do work on it, um, trying to get it together to do it. Uh, right now, we were working on the uh, cost of service study just to make sure that we've got the right revenues uh, to pay for the debt on it. And then we've got the subdivision that we've talked about forever is actually submitted a formal application to us. So we're reviewing that. And another matter with the board, Mr. Chairman, maybe for the May meeting, if we could put on there for the positions of the board positions, we might want to talk about that. Okay. And that's all I have. All right. Um... We're working with ITC to, they're trying to site their um, transmission line into our new substation through two townships. Uh, has not been an easy road for them. So um, they're going to one of the townships next Tuesday night and they were at the other township last week. So it's uh, not been very easy for them. Um, uh, we're using an interim finance director. We have not been successful in getting applications. Uh, so we're using a firm, uh, the Woodhill Group, uh, um, for a while. We're not sure exactly how long yet. So they're doing a really good job for us. Um, we have for sale our 100 unit uh, um, housing unit. Uh, we've got over. 50 people looking at it. So it's, uh, we're, we think we're hitting the market at the right time. Uh, I believe um, proposals are due from those 50 people by the uh, end of April. So that'll be interesting. Um, as Chris mentioned, we start with Granger on Consolidates uh, Waste uh, starting Monday. So uh, all the blue and green cans have left town and Everything is brown with Granger. So um, we were very, very surprised we had as an option uh, the capability of uh, doing recycling. And we were very surprised how many people, I don't have the exact numbers, opted for the extra cost for recycling, which is $5.50 a month for two pickups. Um, and we're charging. Uh, $13 a month for trash pickup. So it's a lot cheaper than uh, any other single. So uh, uh, you know, hopefully uh, both Chris and I uh, can say we've made a good choice there. So are you guys doing toters for your recycling or? Yes, so yeah, 96 gallon yeah. uh, for trash. You can do the 64 or the 96, uh, but the uh, recycling is an option. So, um, we're, but we're getting really surprising good turnout for recycling. Did you have lots of proposals or Republic, I'm assuming? We only received two proposals, one from Republic, one from Granger. Waste Management did not bid. Um, also, Battle Creek is switching from Waste Management to Republic after probably over 30 years. Uh, so uh, Republic is starting, I think this last Monday, they, they started. Uh, in Battle Creek, so. but the prices were very close. Yeah, uh, uh, we had three. Uh, there's a group called Smileys that uh, bid too as well in this area, just to let you know. And they bid. They won to Concha bid. They were close to uh, Granger's when they bid. Very close. Um, our third grower is. Uh, uh, 
install three 3,000 kVA transformers for them. Uh, and they are going to start growing uh, in May. They're connected uh, and they're getting all their final approval. So uh, um, hopefully they're going to be going in May, which should be interesting load because they're saying they're good. Well, every time, you know, what we think they're going to do and what they're going to do is two different stories. So we're dealing with that. Um, I'm not sure if any of you heard that it made newspapers around us uh, is that uh, city of Kalamazoo was fined by Mo my OSHA uh, because they stopped at a, a public works a utility crew and uh, they were fined uh, because they didn't have masks on. We're not social distancing. So it was a random stop. Just uh, um, the inspectors saw this crew. And one of the things uh, they had said, which uh, I think Kalamazoo fought was the, uh, uh, that you have to have an on-site COVID coordinator for with every single crew, <laughs> which is I think totally impossible because um, if you have two people working out there, you can't have a, a COVID inspector on every single crew. So, uh, but they were initially cited for that. And then I think that was dropped. So just forewarning you that my OSHA is out there. So they're looking for you to, if you got four people in a vehicle, that's a, a violation. Well, if they're masked up, they're okay. If they're not masked up then Yeah. That crew outside, were they outside? Yes. Yes. I, I looked up the citation, didn't give a whole lot of specifics, but yeah, they were supposedly, it was just a drive by. And uh, the only other city was Port Huron that was back in, I believe last year sometime, but there's been no other cities. Um, but Kevin, I, I looked, uh, there were at least four instances on the Myosha site for businesses in the Adrian area. Um, so the, I'm not sure if they like Lenaway County, but uh, just, uh, it was interesting, but um, this was just a, a random stop. So just something to, uh, no one needs to pay my OSHA fine. So, but so just on that. And then do our projects, um, it's gonna be the, probably the busiest summer um, we have under contract right now. Um, We'll have probably close to $6 million of uh, million and a half dollars on the dam rehab. Uh, we've got five miles of repaving that was through our voter approved millage. Uh, we have a new subdivision that we're building as part of our neighborhood improvement authority. And then we have another half million phase two of the uh, street paving that there'll be over three years that we'll be doing that. And then we have a million dollar small urban grant. So, um, uh, probably going to dodge a lot of orange cones in, in Marshall this summer. So, but uh, we hope to pave 17 miles in the next three years. So, which of our 42 miles, so it's going to be a big uh, dent. That's all I have. Uh, any, I have yes, a yep. question. Oh, Chris. I just uh, wanted to add, and I forgot to, to mention, we are in the middle or starting the cost of service study in electric water and wastewater. A uh, UFS is doing that for us. Um, also, union negotiations are starting for us as well. So I don't know, are your guys' union contracts on the MMEA site? I got, yeah, my contracts are up there. I got another year. I'm in year okay. three or four, but they're all on there. Okay, just Mine's, so we can review them. Mine's June 30th. Gotcha, so we're all right in the same spot. I think, is that what ours is, Dave? June 30th, I believe. So. Yeah, ours is Teamsters. Gotcha. 214. Ours is IBEW. We're still workers. We yeah. negotiate not just for electric, but water, wastewater, and our streets. So they're all one one union. Yeah, I, I believe I made the request to at least to Hillsdale and to Coldwater for uh, their contracts. Um, so our contract is on the MMEA website, just so you're aware. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to just go there and grab it. Um, yeah. For our IBW. So we're... Uh, we have not sat down with the union yet to see what their requests are. It's going to be more money, but yeah. <laughs> I kind of know that already. <laughs> hey, Tom, quick question. Is there anything, can you share anything on the capacity issue with the, uh, with the 
Marshall Energy Center? Well, Marshall Energy Center is, you know, said that they are not going to build in this year. They keep saying next year, and uh, um, I'm going to meet with Pam and Ed, and I I'm not sure who else from uh, AMP staff to uh, um, do something here this month, make a decision so that we have something firmed up in May. So that is part of the discussion. No updates for the big. Plus, that's why I was asking a lot of the renewable questions. Yeah. The solar. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I have. Uh, we uh, need to go into closed session. Uh, anything before we go into closed session? So, I will take a um, a motion to go into closed session. To um, I'm not sure of the section. I always forget the section of the act, but I'll take a motion in support. Order move. Hillsdale was support. Oh, go ahead, Hillsdale. Okay, we have a motion to go in closed session uh, from Coldwater, second by Hillsdale. Uh, Tricia, will you call the roll? Uh, Member Button? Yes. Cornish? Yes. Mackey? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mathis? Yes. And Tarkowitz? Yes, and there will we will be coming back into open session uh, uh, with some action. So, uh, uh, Pat, I don't know, know how you want to do the rooms. Uh, Tricia, I think you're okay to uh, step away. Uh, Tom Don Reed, could either you or Jeff email me uh, what action was taken afterwards, and I'll just stay off. Yeah, that's not a problem, Don. I'll make sure I send it to you. Okay, I you. appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Don. Okay, thank you all. We're going in closed session. We want to go to the closed room or... However, Pat's going to do that. Pat, you want to do that or just because everybody's off except for people we know? How do you want to handle that? It looks like it's just he, us. He was running multiple meetings. The only thing is it's live and somebody could be on Facebook right now. He, he either has oh, to okay. end the live portion. Let me run down and see. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, otherwise, it'll be recorded, and if you're watching live, you're you're gonna. Okay, we'll take a five minute, five minute break. So, Dave, how are you funding 